it's fair to say that wrestling is a pretty weird art form. And it's also fair to say that I'm probably a little bit too obsessed with the weirder sides of it. See, I love the death matches. I love pushing the limits of what wrestling really is or what wrestling can really be. That's why today I want to talk about one of my favourite ever matches. Invisible Man versus Invisible Stan. Surprisingly, an Invisible Man gimmick isn't actually a new thing in any way. It actually has a long and storied history in professional wrestling. Most notably when they'd run out of other ideas and they thought it'd be a big shock to have someone invisible attack someone. It actually still sees play today, if you think about it. The Undertaker's lights going out gimmick is actually just an invisible man gimmick, but they don't want to have it be an invisible man gimmick, if that makes sense. It was also a pretty big thing in like 70s, 80s Memphis wrestling. They had a lot of Invisible Man gimmicks along with all their other weird stuff. But really, the earliest I've heard of an Invisible Man gimmick isn't in professional wrestling. In old Japanese theatre shows, the crew would always wear all black. So when they had a ninja kill someone, they'd just have someone dressed like the crew and kill someone. And that is what led to ninjas being seen as wearing black clothing, when black clothing doesn't actually hide you at night. you probably wear dark blue if you were trying to achieve that. As for the match itself, I think the thing that really blows me away this match is it still makes sense as a wrestling match, even though there's no wrestlers. Let me elaborate for a second. There's a heel and there's a face. There's a finish. It all makes sense. It all sticks to the conventions you'd expect from a wrestling match. Back and forth, comeback, baby face, heat. It is completely in kayfabe. And actually, what this match proves is if you have a crowd that's into something and they accept what they're seeing, they will love it. And even if it is a really weird performance piece by Bryce Wemsberg telling the story of this match, despite, as I said, be there being no wrestlers in the ring, I think it's also important to recognize with matches like this, and this match in particular is, just because something's played for laughs or because it's comedic doesn't mean that it's inherently not artful. And this match is very artistic, it has a lot going on, and it really shows how replaceable everyone in the ring really is, and how the idea of star power is completely insane and not real, right? Because they sold a match where there's no wrestlers. They sold a match with no wrestlers. <laughs> it was on the card, it was announced. And I think that's kind of amazing, just from a art form standpoint. And honestly, this match is available free on YouTube, but I'll link it in the description, you should go watch it, it's incredible. I love it. Everything that's going on is great. And now, as Monty Python said, it's something completely different, but still good. This also happens to be my favourite match of 2019, for anyone who is interested in my opinions for whatever reason. So, this match is the single light tube death match. It's a very simple match. If you break the light tube, you lose. If you break the light tube over someone, you also lose. This is a great match because it plays with your expectations. It does a great job of keeping you on edge the entire match. With just little tiny hints that, ooh, maybe this spot will be the one that ends up being the finish. And it does it a lot of times in very interesting ways. Because this could be a very boring gimmick very easily. But it actually manages to really do a good job of balancing teasing the light tube while also putting on a good wrestling match at the same time. And I don't think this is a good gimmick match or good because it pushes the limits of wrestling. I just think this is an amazing match. I think this match is what you should look at when you look at storytelling and wrestling. Because this match isn't just about the gimmick, even though I've only introduced it as the gimmick so far. The actual backstory of this match is pretty simple. So Akito is the hardcore champion, however he is not a very hardcore wrestler. This makes all the hardcore wrestlers very mad because all of his stipulations are very boring, including and up to no stipulation and everyone must follow the rules as a stipulation. And so after being yelled at repeatedly, he comes up with this stipulation. And it is actually a pretty classic wrestling match that happens to have a light tube in it. And it plays with the preconceptions of deathmatch wrestling and hardcore wrestling that, oh well, 
If you're using a chair or using a weapon, it can't be a good wrestling match. It can't be a real wrestling match. It's a different kind of match. When in reality, some of my favourite matches are death matches. Some of my favourite matches are hardcore matches. Some of my favourite matches are by people who can barely wrestle, but they know how to tell a story, so it doesn't matter. And I just want to thank everyone for watching, and uh, I'm really glad to be back.